Welcome to spooky movie season with a reaction to The Old Dark House. This is a commentary. It is not a market substitute. Please support the original. And no spoilers when recommending movies, just the title and year of release. Oh, based on a novel. Should have a good story then. It was a dark and stormy night. And all of a sudden it got darker and stormier. I love the trickle of ice cold water pouring down my neck. This is one of the happiest moments of my life. Would you like me to drive for a bit? You all right, Pendrel? Fine. <laughs> oh, there was someone in the back the whole time they were arguing. Well, I'll tell you something that might happen. I don't want to frighten Mrs. Waverton. Go on, Mr. Pendrel. I'm not easily frightened. Aren't you? I am. Aren't <laughs> you? I am. <laughs> ah! You're gonna stall the car! Bon voyage! <laughs> oh, the comic relief is great. My own view is we're not on a map. Oh dear. Laughing at clouds. So dark up above. Yeah, I think you should stop at the old creepy house, actually. What could possibly go wrong? Hello, yes, this is Janet. Good evening. My name is Fim. Horace Fim. Maybe take their coats first. I don't think you'd want them sitting on the furniture like this. My sister was on the point of arranging these flowers. Uh. What are you doing here? She has incredible talent because when I walk with a candle, I go somewhat slowly because first of all, it can go out if you walk too fast. I found that out the hard way. And secondly, you don't want to splatter wax because even though it has the thing to catch it, it only goes so far. So I tend to walk sedately. She managed to just come tearing down those stairs without blowing the candle out and I, I hope without splattering wax. So that is talent. I'm already impressed by her. We hate to intrude, but what else can we do? You see, there isn't anywhere else we can go. Even the road below is underwater, and for that matter, this place itself may be underwater pretty soon, or even buried. Um... What's the matter? This house is safe. I know it better than you. The misfortune is yours, not ours. No beds. They can't have beds. Oh, That's my goodness. Morgan seems to work with the sister. He kind of ignores the brother's instructions and then looks to her. Only gin. I like gin. Gin is good. Nothing wrong with it. Mrs. Waverton? Thanks very much. You don't seem to understand. We may be cut off. Shut up in this house. I think the emphasis on the house being the problem. <laughs> there's, there's no light on the candle. She's walking with an unlit candle. It's a dreadful night. Come there she goes. Okay. Yeah, I do the same thing in my room. One time the electricity went out and I didn't even notice until my laptop battery went down because I was using candles. They were all goddess here. They used to bring their women here. Brazen, lulling creatures in silks and satins. They filled the house with laughter and sin. Laughter and sin. My father's still alive. He's upstairs. He's very old. Oh, is he? He's 102. Oh, my. You revel in the joys of fleshly love. Don't you? That's finer stuff still, but it'll rot too in time. Don't! Oh. How dare you! At least bring a jacket. I mean, beautiful gown. But isn't it cold? I was merely telling your wandering guests that you were about to thank your gods for their bounty. That'll do. I know your mocking, lying tongue. Oh my goodness, this family. <laughs> Interesting way of passing bread along. 
Oh, I like the way they're doing the condiments. Kind of on that tower thing. Let them in. A grand fire. Oh my! Don't put it out. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, but <laughs> needs must when the devil drives. Have a potato. <laughs> he loves his potatoes. And we've been talking now for nearly two hours. What do we know about each other? Nothing. Not thing. I think he doesn't quite fit into these times. You know, factories and cheap advertising and money grubbing and well. What I mean is, Bill here's all right with these things. I envy you. I admire you. Oh, yes, you envy me, all right, but you don't admire me. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that Lucy didn't go too well at that party, especially with the women. They snubbed her. Just didn't think the cotton frock was good enough. Well, you may not believe it, but I know that's what killed her. <laughs> that's what started me making money. Does it lock when it closes? Look at those. Oops. Come on. Completely soaked. <laughs> I seem to spend most of the evening changing your shoes. <laughs> you ought to be a nursery maid. They want a lamp. Give them the large one. There's oil in it. We used it the last time the lights went wrong. But I think it's a little too heavy for me. I don't think I could carry it down all those stairs. What's up at the top? There are one or two things that I should very much like for you to see. I should like to very much, but you must show me some other time. We've got to get that lamp. You... No, no, I kind of want to know what he has in there. Yes, but why should we if we don't want to? And I don't What is up to. there? But this is absurd. I... The father is still alive. 102 or whatever. It's a lot of cobwebs. Open the door, you know you want to. <laughs> Be careful of her fingers. Okay. Oh. I don't think you're gonna win this against Morgan. Oof. Can you lock him up somewhere? He's only stunned. You probably won't believe me, but Bill doesn't. He doesn't expect anything. Do you know what I mean by anything? Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, we know. He likes people to think he's ever so gay. I think he's in love with that little dead wife still. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he is. What are you thinking of? You may not be very pleased. Titanic. Risk it. You know the scene I mean. I'd like to take you in my arms and hold you and press you to me very gently. I'd like it too. Would you, Gladys Perkins? I like this scene because he could have been all over her, but he first explained what he wanted to do. Like he said, I want to do this and this. Is that okay with you? And she's like, yeah. Which is rare in an old film. He is a stand-up guy. I'm just flinging myself at your head. I've got a crazy idea that I might help you to be a useful person. Darling Perkins. Quite mad, my darling. And thank God for it. Aww. I've got a funny feeling something dreadful might happen to us if we go back to that house. I do too. Probably you should stay in the car. I'm a devil of a weight. Well, if you're too heavy for me, I shall drop you in the mud and go on alone. <laughs> Ooh. We're going to be married. Oh, are you? At least if she'll have me. Yeah, I figured. I'm going to ask her tomorrow in the cold light of morning. Will you come to the wedding? I think you're off your head. <laughs> Do you? I love how her ruffle kind of looks like a mini bolero jacket. It's a gorgeous design. Can we get you anything?
Some water? Soil is the worst, you know. We have to watch him. Soil, quite certainly, would set fire to the house. <laughs> oh. He tried to once before. Your brother's out of his room. What? So? <laughs> Look! Oh, great. That's lovely. There's a lot of people in locked rooms right now. If he sets fire to the place, if it were me, I'd be like, can we just go out to the car? Why should they lock you up? They're frightened of me. I know something about them. Years ago, they killed their sister, Rachel. But I wouldn't tell. I promised I'd never tell. <gasps> that actually makes sense. They hated her. We've got to help the others with Morgan. Isn't there some way of getting through? No, no way. Oh, no. <laughs> Flames are really knives. They're cold, my friend. Sharp and cold as snow. <laughs> they burn like ice. Okay. Sit down. That is why you understood so quickly that I wanted to kill you. <laughs> We understand each other so well. But Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. And yes. it came to pass on the morrow, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Look, there's Morgan. He's come for you, Morgan. <laughs> Don't move. Uh. <laughs> uh. Get that poker. Oh, no. And everyone's locked in. I knew this would happen. And he's clever too, starting with flammable materials. Can you start unlocking people now? Like, get the women out. Get the old guy out. <gasps> oh! Ow! Ow! Okay, can you let them out? Come on, Morgan. Thank you. He's trying to help you. Okay. I don't think he survived that fall, but I don't know, maybe. <sighs> He's breathing. He's alive! What? Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. So happy to have met you. Um, not likewise. Perkins, will you marry me? <laughs> he falls right back asleep. This reminded me a little bit of Rebecca, and not just because there was also a Rebecca in this. It was very psychological, a lot of talk about someone who was kind of this wild, free spirit who passed away but has left a mark on the house and the family that has lasted long after their death. In this case, although Saul was obviously a little bit, mm, I think he was right about his sister conspiring to kill her sister and making sure it happened. The way she was talking about like sinful, wicked, wicked sister. And the way she reacted to the otherwise kind of put together, grounded, but also elegant wife was like, no, she's not wicked just because she's wearing a silky outfit. She seemed super dedicated to her husband, even though they quarreled a bit, which was very realistic. It was more a psychological, who's telling the truth, who might want to murder you at any time, you don't know. And it's that question of, did the house twist these people? 
into becoming what they are or was the fact that they reside here what made the house seem kind of evil i thought the lighting was very well done the sound design was awesome just the constant thunderclaps and everything very dramatic morgan was an interesting character because he's not bad exactly he had drank too much and was becoming violent but within that he was also occasionally trying to do the right things that scene at the end where he's cradling Saul whose body is just broken and I think we lost him is so poignant I'm afraid if I had actually been there I would have just been like you know what I'm gonna take a slice of this roast beef and I'm gonna just go sit in the car I will see you in the morning <laughs> This is this is a little much. 